everyone, this is Meg at Chasing Retro. Today I am so, so excited to share with you four ways to use paper scraps and four ways to use fabric scraps. This is sort of my joining in with Angela the Traveling Crafters hashtag give a scrap. If you would like to see what other people are doing with their scraps and making unique, fun ephemera with things that some people might otherwise throw away, please go check out that hashtag and look at the other videos that have been submitted. First of all, and for some of you who have been around a while, this will be a review session, but one of my favorite ways to use paper scraps is to make Franken paper. You can make Franken paper using large pieces of cutoffs or scrapbook paper that you uh, have used part of but have a little piece remaining. And you can actually piece it together, sew it together to create an entire page. If you have larger pieces, this is ideal. But in my case, when I make a journal, I almost always end up with off cuts that are one to two inches wide the width of the page, either you know eight and a half by 11 or 12 by 12. And I never really knew what to do with these pieces until I started doing this. I got a plain piece of cardstock and I glue the strips down. And I have a full tutorial of this on my channel if you wanna search for Franken paper. But I glue each strip down and as you can see, I vary where I start the strip. So here I just have a little piece and then I started another one about a fourth of the way in. This is an, a complete piece and here I have two separate ones again. After I glue them down, and the easiest way to do this is to do glue stick on the whole sheet. I pick up the sheet, I flip it over, and I trim the little pieces that are hanging off. Then you can pick up those pieces and start to piece together either on the same sheet or on a new sheet. That way you use every bit of your offcut strips. So after it looks like this, I let it dry just for a little while. And then I take it over to my sewing machine and I use a zigzag stitch, 1.8 width between stitches and about three and a half stitch height. And I just go through with a white thread and I do a zigzag stitch. The reason I do white is because if you wanna turn this into a tag or journaling card, it doesn't interfere too much with your space for writing. Of course, you still have to write between the threads, but if it were black and white on the back, it would be a little bit visually jarring. So I try to keep it to match whatever color the background is. After that, you can cut them into tags, such as this, or you can make them into pockets. Um, after you cut them, you do need to go back around and either secure with glue if you don't have a sewing machine, or do a straight stitch around the edge just because we used a glue stick the first time around and it may not hold up over time. So I secure it and tack it down with a straight stitch on my machine. And then I add a little hole punch and put a ribbon in it and they're ready to go. You might remember a while back, I had a square punch tutorial, things to make with a square punch. And you can do this with scraps too. You can use these off cuts and you can cut them into squares and you can create this type of Franken paper. It's more of a patchwork quilt look. So this is just another way of doing it with squares instead of long rectangles. The second thing I love to do with scraps of paper, and these are also off cuts. This is an idea of something that you can use one of these much more narrow strips. You can do Franken paper with these, but you will be there all day. These are very small, half an inch or maybe less, and just a little bit that you need to trim off the edge of a page. Ideally, this looks best if you have something printed on both sides, but you don't have to do it that way. So what I do is I just start folding it, not really accordion style, more of a messy accordion, if you will. So I still want it to go down but I'm going to let it zigzag its way down. So I'm just, there's no rhyme or reason. There is no method or formula for this. I just try to keep it so that if I do a visual straight line down, it will catch every little piece as I fold it. So here we go. So after it looks like that, 
I look at it, if it needs to be a little more straightened up, I might alter, like right here, it needs to be a little straighter, so I'll alter that. Then I immediately take it over to my sewing machine and I use a straight stitch and I stitch all the way down. I don't really know what I call these. I just kind of call them crinkles. They look really, really cute glued to the edge of a page or even at the top of a tag or journaling card. You can also cut them up into little pieces and just use them as, you know, embellishments on other projects that you have. But really, I do like to put them on the edge of a page just as another little decoration on an otherwise empty blank journaling page. So we'll call these paper crinkles. The third thing, and I know all of you are probably familiar with this, but this is a master board. This is the result of an entire shoebox tote full of scraps that I keep next to my desk at all times. If I like a page but don't really know if I'm going to use it in any other capacity except for collage, I toss it into that box. And this is what I ended up with. I actually used a 12 by 12 scrapbook page that I didn't really love. You can use your ugly sheets for this and I just completely covered it. We have a little bit of everything on here. We have wallpaper, um, we have book pages, we have printables, here's fabric. I went back and added washi tape as a top layer. You can add lace, more washi tape. Here's a postal stamp. This is from a flower book. You can use random titles that you find in books, maybe chapter titles. Uh, back here, here's a page from a uh, interior design book. Um, wrapping paper is down here. Here's a stamped book page that I didn't like the way it turned out, but I was like, I'll use it for a collage. So this is a master board, and what you do with this is you can use it as a page if you want to fold it and put it in your journal that way, but my favorite way to use it is to cut it up into journaling cards, uh, tags. It could be a great background for something, like if you want to put a large, bold image. This makes a great backdrop for that. This is a great thing to do when you have a creative block, when you just do not feel like starting a new journal or the thing that you got up that day hoping to do, you just have no inspiration to do it. Just sit down, put a video on, put on some music, start making a master board and eat through your scraps. And it is not only fun, it's pretty therapeutic as well. Um, it does require a little bit of artistic thought, but most, most of the time it is just Letting your mind rest. It's just a good activity for doing something that just relaxes you and brings you joy. So that's a master board. The last thing I wanted to show you to use paper scraps for is just sort of along the same lines, but this is just a tag that I have collaged on. This is not started from a master board. This is a tag printable. As you can see, it's like a slight print. Uh, I printed it and then I started layering items. This is some watercolor over a dictionary page. I ripped a, a piece off of that. This is from a nature book. This is from an ideals magazine and this is a piece of fabric. And I just glued everything down one at a time with a glue stick. Things that tried to lift up, I'll go back and use some Tombow mono glue. But an another great way to use your scraps. Now let's move on to what to do with all of your fabric scraps. Number one, this is from my Precious Dog's Memory Journal, which I haven't shown y'all yet, I promise I will. <laughs> this is his memory book, and on the first page you can see what I'm talking about. If you have a sewing machine, or if you do hand sewing, and you end up with loose thread scraps, Gather them all in a little basket or box, and then when you need some sort of fiber, you can layer it underneath pieces of um, torn corrugated cardboard, scrapbook paper. Here's a label that I made with rubber stamps, and then I just sewed around it to hold everything down. It's pretty secure in there. You can also use other things besides thread. I've done it using really cool artsy fibrous yarn. That is another idea you can do. You can also do um, very, very delicate lace or eyelash trim. You can sort of gather that into a little ball and then glue it or sew it down. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can glue it. You just have to hold it down and make sure you put enough glue to hold everything together. But 
this is a great way to use the thread scraps that literally most of us throw away without even thinking about it. And depending on your project, the colors can be just plain black, white neutrals, or they could be quite bright and colorful and festive. You may want to keep a pile of both, some neutrals and then some colorful mixes, depending on the type of journal that you think you'll be using in the future. Another idea for using fabric scraps are patchwork pockets. These are just little pieces of fabric offcuts. Maybe I had some left over from a project. Maybe a lot of times in thrift stores, you'll find bags of just small pieces of fabric. Maybe someone was a quilter and these are their offcuts. So I just glue these down onto index cards with a glue stick. Uh, it's easier to do it if they're more straight edges, but as you can see, I decided to be a little bit bold <laughs> and um, risky, if you will, and I used some straw uh, strawberries. Why did I say that? I used some triangles and I used some weird trapezoid type shapes and I glued them all down and then I go back after the glue dries and I zigzag in between each one to tack both sides down I see that I missed that one right there, oops. Then after all of that is done, I go around and I do one more straight stitch around the outside. And then you can just glue on all three sides, put it down as a pocket. Perfect way to use your fabric scraps. Along the same line, you can make snippet rolls. You can make paper snippet rolls with fabric or you can make fabric on fabric. This is fabric on fabric. This is just really inexpensive white broadcloth. A lot of people like to use muslin. You can use coffee dyed muslin. I found that the best width is about an inch and a half to two inches for all types of reasons and, and uses. One is, this is my favorite width, about one and a half for tying journals. This is the off cut of the ties that I created for some recipe journals. So after you glue, and you can use a glue stick for this too, you glue just enough with glue to hold each piece down onto your base. And then after it's, I would say three feet is probably the longest that you can manageably work with with a sewing machine. You take it over to your sewing machine and you can do a straight stitch or decorative stitch. That is also an option. It just takes a lot longer <laughs> and run three or four lines. I'm not super exact about it. I don't try to evenly space it out. Some people do, but in my mind, it's a junk journal, so I don't want it to be exact. But uh, having a contrasting color like black is interesting, but you can also use a lighter neutral shade, or you can use something fun like hot pink, or you can do one of each color. Same thing with paper. This is actually not just regular paper. This is drywall tape. I bought this in a roll at Lowe's. It's not sticky. It is just the type of things that you would use with mud to attach two pieces of drywall together. It was pretty inexpensive for a very large roll. And I just cut off two to three foot sections. I glue down fabric scraps. As you can see, a lot of these are in the same color family. I got this at a craft reuse store near me and they were in a bag together. So probably someone's quilting project. And I just started gluing them down and then I used a white thread straight stitch to put them all together, together, hold them down. Now with the paper ones, obviously you can't tie a journal with it, but I like to use these as belly bands or as a side pocket along the edge of a page. So that is a great, great way to use your small square, squarish shapes. Here's another paper one that is a little bit wider and also has more bold colors just from my scrap basket. I did not try to be matchy-matchy with this one. I was just trying to bust some scraps. And so if you like the eclectic look, this is good for you. As you can see here, I even have a piece of a ruffle and I decided to just throw that on here. It adds a little more visual interest. Some people, after they do this part, like to go back and attach things like lace, buttons, things like that. You can make these super elaborate and 3D, but I decided just to do fabric on these. 
The next thing, the last thing that I want to show you of how to use your fabric scraps is this. So if you make fabric cover journals, you know that one of the things that you do in the process after you cut the fabric a little bit larger than your base of a cracker box or whatever, you cut the corners off to make it easier to fold each side down onto the cardboard. So you end up with a lot of these little triangles, right? And they're not perfect. Here, this one has uh, pinking shears on one side and straight on the other two. That's fine. You can just keep a separate box of these triangle scraps in view. And so when you need to add a quick decoration to a page, you can just line them up in a row like this and run your sewing machine straight down. I think this is really cute. They don't have to match. They don't have to be the same size. It's just a great fun way to add another element to a page and keep these from going in the trash bin. So I hope you enjoyed this short little video. I know none of it was super novel or super creative or something that you have never seen before, but I wanted to put all of these uh, eight ideas in one video together for those of you who might just need a reminder of some of these things or those of you who are new to junk journaling. Uh, another way to keep our scraps out of the trash bin and make our journals even more beautiful and unique. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.